I usually talk about SPP as a very courageous organization. We built the first totally digital pension offering on the Swedish market. You should be able to see the digital cathedral and not just the stone that you're carving at the moment. Corporate Knights uh, named us the most sustainable insurance company in the world. Solving problems big and small, that, uh, that drives me. Structure, that's uh, I think part of my DNA. You need to work hard, nothing comes for free. Set your mind on, on something and then also express it to people around you. Grabbing opportunities comes, but not chasing it and trying to, to move too fast. This is Sierra TV. My name is Hendrik Dickers. I'm here today with Christine Lindmark, who is the Chief Information Officer of SVP. A very warm welcome, uh, Christine. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Christine, you have uh, a Master in uh, Science and Engineering. You have a degree in IT from the Linköping University in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, you have uh, 20 years experience in, uh, in technology focused on the financial uh, sector both from the consultancy side and from the business uh, side. And now for more than seven years, you are the uh, CIO of um, SPP, which is Sweden's leading occupational pension provider and uh, is a daughter of the uh, Big Stir brand financial group. So Christine, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what's your background and how did you arrive in this position as CIO? Yes, I started with Accenture in the year 2000 on the top of a dot-com uh, mm -hmm. boom. Uh, it was really exciting times. Uh, I really loved uh, coming into to Accenture. It was a, a very professional organization and, and uh, a really good starting point of a career. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for almost eight years. And then I moved on to IF PNC Insurance, mm -hmm. so the big insurer here in, in the Nordics. And I got a role there as head of project office. And so the project managers and heading the, yeah, the pro, pro project portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was there for three, four years uh, and then moved on uh, to SPP and Storbrand uh, 2011. Okay. And at that time I I was uh, heading the web development. Okay, so now for seven years you're the CIO of, of SPP. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, for, for those of us who don't know the brand, it's not a world-renowned brand, so what is it that SPP uh, really does and what is it that the company is really good at? Yes, uh, our core business and our passion is to deliver uh, tailored uh, occupational pension solutions. Mm -hmm. And as you said, we're part of Storbrand Group, it's a Norwegian uh, group, uh, so one of the larger uh, players in the Nordics. Yep. And we are the most sustainable company, uh, most sustainable insurance company in the world. Mm -hmm. So sustainability is a part of our, our DNA. Okay, but then in 2016, you started a big change program. The company started a big change uh, program. What was, the, what was really the problem? Because you did a, a, a big transformation and, and became much more digital than before. What was the, 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 the challenges that the company were, uh, were facing at, was facing at the time? There were a lot of challenges. Uh, if you looked at it from a cost perspective, mm -hmm. uh, we, had, uh, we saw shrinking margins in, in the market and that we really couldn't compete with our offering on the market mm -hmm. and we also had a lot of quality issues that created problems over time and then there was also a must case we had a fragmented uh, technical platform and uh, when it came to like the enablement perspective we we could do like digital stunts but mm -hmm. when it came to true digitalization and new business models we were not there at all so we did needed to do something from from the ground up yeah so a core renewal program. So that's, I mean, that's a big thing. So basically you have, or you are, and almost finishing the complete re-platforming of the, the core system of the company. So tell us a little bit, this, this program is, is called the Future Core. Tell us a little bit about the program. How did it start and where are you now? And, and, and what's the returns that you expect from this uh, program? 
Uh, yes, it started as an IT strategy pro- project in 2015, but uh, realized quite fast that this is something that we needed to do together with the business. It could never work as an IT transformation. So we kind of used this as a catalyst to change uh, mm-hmm. for the entire organization. Uh, so for over the last four years, we've been uh, going through every process and the way we work and uh, changed the SP from the inside and out. Mm-hmm. So we're now a, a digital front runner in our industry, and we were definitely not before. So it's it's almost like you described it when we discussed uh, we did the briefing for this interview. You, you described it as as a heart transplantation, basically, it's, or it's like changing the engine of a flying airplane. I mean, that the complexity must be quite something there to re, to replace the core system of an uh, of uh, of an insurance company, right? Yeah, especially in life and pension, you have contracts going back 40, 50, 60 years back in time, and you need to make sure that they it lasts the, the same amount of time in the future. Mm-hmm. So that, that gives us a lot of, of uh, complexity. And as I said, when you do something like this for uh, three or four or five years, then you may need to make sure that you're not doing this, uh, that it becomes something introvert. So you need to make sure that uh, we talked about the heart transplantation. Mm-hmm. And I think you need to do that while the patient is up and running because the world is not stopping just yep. because you, you're doing a core, core transformation uh, within your organization. Okay. And how far are you with this project now? Is it, is it completely delivered? And, and what are the returns that you can realize with this now? We have 90% migrated to the new platform. Mm-hmm. So we have about a year left of migration. Um, and But we also already realized the cost savings of about 5 million euros mm-hmm. yearly and uh, also enabled ourselves for a new uh, business that we uh, could only dream of before. Yeah. So it's been uh, quite a journey. So you are, you are about to decommission the, the old legacy systems then and, and, and completely go on the, on the new platform. Can you tell us a bit about the architecture or the, how you implemented this new platform? Is it, is it on, still on premise? Is it the cloud? What's, what's, the, what's, the, what's new about it? How, does it? how is it completely different from the legacy systems that you had before? But first of all, the old platform was really fragmented and uh, it was hard to, to find the right competence. And it was, uh, we also, this is a um, standard system uh, on the Swedish market, okay. which means that the uh, like a regulatory uh, changes that we need to do, we can share that kind of cost with, um, with our competitors on the market. It, we, that's not where we... Uh, should be at our best. So, mm. so that gives us uh, a lot of uh, uh, benefits and we can focus on bringing uh, what we're really good at, the digital services uh, to, our, to our customers. Okay, so it was basically own development, legacy, different type of, of, of uh, patch together and now um, using an, an, uh, a commercial available platform that you can further build on, correct? Yes. What are the new things that you now can do that were impossible before? Can you talk about that? Uh, yes, one example is that we built the first uh, totally digital uh, pension offering on the Swedish market. Mm-hmm. So we rolled out that uh, in 2019 and uh, also was awarded the uh, digital project of the year at the CAO Awards in Sweden mm-hmm. that year. Uh, so that's uh, one uh, one thing that we have delivered on the new uh, platform. And also we've uh, been able to to get a lot of um, portfolio transfers and new business uh, on on this new platform that mm-hmm. we really couldn't do yeah. uh, before. And what, what does that mean, uh, a fully digital pension plan? How, what, what, is, what does that mean for people that are saving for their pension or that go on, on their pension? How is, that, how is their experience different? First of all, uh, we're mainly a, a, a B2B, uh, this is an occupation pension, so we're mainly a B2B company, but mm-hmm. of course our main delivery is then paying out the pensions mm-hmm. to the individual customers. Yeah. But uh, in this perspective, the entire sales and offering process is digital uh, to the co- companies, and then uh, the individual cost- customer can also do the kind, of, uh, the kind of choices that they need to make uh, 
uh, completely digital with no with no uh, uh, no paper involved. No. And in in our um, in uh, financial services, uh, as you know, it's still a lot of papers, but we try to be put to be go fully digital now. Okay, which is also in your sustainability strategy an important thing, I can imagine. Uh, of course, yes. Yeah. So um, you talked about portfolio transfers and, and, and digital retirement. Can you talk a little bit more about, about that? What does that really mean? Uh, digital retirement is uh, f for the pensioner to do their um, the choices that they need to do, how it's going to be paid out in, in mm -hmm. how many years and uh, etc. And have that as a completely digital process. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Sweden, you can get pension from several different companies. Uh, so you really need to have smooth processes. And as you as the world where the world is going, then you expect all this to be uh, that you're able to do this. Yeah. So it's, but we've really seen uh, good, uh, uh, both the customer satisfaction and uh, extremely uh, efficient processes mm -hmm. over the last years. Now, this, this new platform also allowed you to, uh, to become more part of the, 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 the ecosystem of, uh, of insurance technology uh, companies uh, in, uh, in, in Sweden. Can you talk a little bit about your role in, in, in the InsureTech uh, ecosystem? Yes, I think it's fun that we can call ourselves InsureTech now, not the mm -hmm. old traditional incumbent. Uh, so that's uh, great that we have positioned ourselves to, to work in partnerships uh, with uh, in the distribution side and also uh, and different um, ways. So we have uh, several uh, uh, examples of how we mm -hmm. work with uh, now in this new ecosystem. And I think that's one of the things that's important there is that first of all, you need to build the capability, technical capabilities to do that. Yeah. But also uh, you need to be uh, curious enough to, to uh, uh, work with the new players and uh, not defend old business models, etc. Yeah. So I think it's several things aspects of that. So Christine, can you give me an example of the of uh, one of the ecosystem and, and, and the collaboration that you have uh, that you have developed there? Yes, we have uh, uh, several examples. We have uh, Fort Knox mm -hmm. and Penshore and they are both uh, small digital players and uh, new players on the uh, life and pension market field in, mm -hmm. in Sweden. And uh, so we collaborate with them and it's uh, fun to see that they came to us because of our uh, technical or digital capabilities yeah. and because of our sustainability focus. Mm -hmm. So we work with them on the distribution side now. Okay, so if we summarize, since 2016, you've been working with the company, close with the business on, uh, on the heart transplant, implementing uh, a new core platform uh, based on a, on the standardized platform and and replacing all the legacy application and that has allowed you to uh, to create new digital services for your clients for the end clients and to to uh, to build new collaborations with insuretech so the tr i mean insurance is a very traditional uh, 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 business but even there now with with digital there's a lot of um, innovation possible yes for sure Okay, now let's talk about uh, how IT and digital is, uh, is organized at SPP. Uh, so maybe give us a, a, a bit of figures. How big is the, the, the company in total? How many people do you have? What's the, maybe the, the, the portfolio, the revenue that you have there? And then how big is IT and how have you organized IT? Uh, yes, we're about 400 people in SPP mm -hmm. and in the SPP tech organization about 75 mm -hmm. plus consultants. Yep. And we have um, organized, uh, in tech we have organized around two uh, main domains, so uh, core and digital. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, uh, two main roles, so developers and business analysts. And then we also have uh, uh, we have a UX and service design. We have uh, um, an agile center with scrum masters and test managers, mm -hmm. and also a tech enablement with more platform development and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so that's on, on the line organization. And then on, uh, we use uh, uh, an agile um, virtual organization. So we rolled out the skilled agile framework about three years ago. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, all people in the tech organization work in, a, in an agile team mm -hmm. um, in one of three uh, different uh, delivery streams. Uh, so we kind of have one, uh, one uh, backlog uh, of development items for everything that we do in SVP, which is really a good way of creating transparency and, and, and so everyone can see and uh, know why we have different prioritizations um, mm -hmm. in the development work. So it's been a really efficient way uh, of working and I created a lot of uh, employment, em employee engagement as well. So it's and how easy was it to implement that? Because I can Im imagine that everything was organized a traditional way, waterfall and so on, and, and, and with budgets and plans and delivery dates and, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and so on. So changing that into working with SAFE and in an agile way, um, driven by IT, how easy is it to, to change an, an IT team? Did you have to make many changes? Did you have to let people go? You had to retrain? How do you do that? Uh, we started the Future Core program as a traditional uh, waterfall project and realized mm. quite quickly that it was clogging, uh, clogging the system. So it got very introvert. And, and that's why we saw that uh, an agile way of working was uh, necessary mm. in order to also be able to deliver those uh, digital services and uh, regulatory things and new business and things um, at the same time. Uh, so it was quite uh, uh, hard work and we trained everyone in mm -hmm. SPP uh, uh, on Agile way of working. Uh, all the leaders had a Agile for Leader training uh, and we have commitment from SPP management, really high commitment from an our CEO as well. Uh, so it's uh, um, been quite a journey, uh, but uh, when we also see that it's not, uh, we also get uh, much, much faster deliveries mm -hmm. and much better control of what we're actually, predictability of what we're going to deliver. So yeah. it's uh, been very successful. So, and what was the most difficult part is that, what well, was that convincing the, the business management, the general management that this was the new way of working or was it uh, training the people or, uh, I mean, or was it making sure that still security and, and stability was built in? What are the, 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 the bottlenecks, the most uh, difficult points you had, to, uh, you had to solve in implementing this? I usually talk about SPP as a very courageous organization. Mm -hmm. So uh, we uh, seldom say no to, <laughs> to new things and are open-minded to change, which was really um, uh, a big part of this. Uh, I think, of course, we had to sit down with the, the risk management, the CRO, mm -hmm. and talk about this big investment now that we're doing with FutureCore. By the way, now we're going to do it in an agile uh, context. Yep. Uh, but I think the hardest, of course, um, I don't know if you have been in a big room planning where you where you plan the next increment, the next twelve weeks work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very uh, energetic uh, place to be, but also it took a, a couple of times to get good at it. And I, I know that on our first uh, big room planning. Uh, and someone went out crying and it was uh, a bit chaotic. Uh, mm -hmm. And now I think we're in um, the 11th increment and the teams are so great at planning together now. It's, it's good to see how, how they learn to collaborate and see what are the connections to the other teams and why do we need to deliver in, in what sprint, etc. So you get much um, more transparency between the teams. Okay, and you say- And now of course with Corona, we, we have to do the big room plannings all digital. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that new routine that they have built over the last two or three years, uh, it really works. It's uh, fantastic to see.
Okay, and you say it, it really adds to employee satisfaction, so people are more happier working this way? Definitely, yes. I think it's very, it's much more involving and you see, we, we usually talk about, or we talk about the, our digital cathedral that we're building and that you should uh, be able to see the digital cathedral and not just the stone that you're carving at the moment and, and understand why we're doing things and, and how it affects uh, the end customers. Yeah. Now, insurance companies, it's all about data, I can imagine. I mean, what you do is you collect data and, 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 and build on top of that. Um, but I can imagine also there, there's a lot of um, uh, innovation that can happen around data. So how are you making sure that the SPP is becoming more and more and more data driven? Well, I think the new core platform has enabled us much more to do so mm -hmm. for before before we were much more uh, f had more fragmentation in our in our data etc and now when we have the new core platform uh, in place then we can start to really draw uh, uh, benefits out of it and we have seen several examples uh, of that we've now uh, for example also trying to to more visualize the data out to our customers mm -hmm. uh, we have a sustainability uh, tool that we are launching to our business customers now so they can see how how your carbon f carbon footprint um, looks like with your uh, the company's investments etc so that's one way of, of uh, showing the data that you have collected and, yeah. and getting it out to your customers and also one of the new capabilities that we're after future core now we see that the, the final stretch on the core project, then we uh, are really focused on our, our next big thing is our customer meeting. So we uh, uh, focusing on our sales and service processes and to mm -hmm. be more uh, efficient and accurate, then you need to have the data to, to um, get that. Christine, let's talk uh, about your role. And uh, so you're the CIO for, uh, for seven years now. So you have made all the changes over the, the last seven years. How do you look at your role today and how does it compare to seven years ago? How has your role changed over the last seven years? I think it has changed tremendously because of, uh, I, I mean, IT has always been important in financial mm -hmm. services, but uh, you definitely see that digital uh, uh, is becoming everything in, in most industries and def definitely in ours as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, our digital strategy is, of course, part of, of the SPP strategy. And together with the management team, we have uh, really set, uh, set an agenda uh, where, that where being a digital leader is, mm -hmm. uh, is a big part of it. And that um, makes, uh, of course, my role together with, uh, with the, uh, the rest of the management team and the rest of SPP uh, and where really do you important. spend most of your time today? What is your focus now? So I can imagine in the beginning you had to create a big strategy and the change and so on. So now that's all uh, ongoing. You have implemented uh, 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 Agile, so that's, that's all there. You're developing new services, so that's also uh, uh, rolling. What is really your focus today? I think I have a split vision of uh, creating business value and having, of course, stable and robust solutions in, in uh, here and now, mm -hmm. and also trying to look a little bit ahead, what's uh, coming next and how do we prepare to be that digital leader, uh, not just next year, but uh, the years to come. Mm -hmm. So, um, so an, an important part of your role is looking into the future. Right. So how do you do that? How do you make sure that you know what's going on and, and how do you make your strategies and decide when can we when are we ready to use new concept, new models, new uh, technologies? How do you do that? I think uh, one thing that the last year with the Corona has uh, shown us is that it's really hard to predict the, the future and uh, you never know what's coming. Mm -hmm. But that, with that, uh, I think it's um, really important to be, uh, to be able to be uh, fast moving. Mm -hmm. So uh, since 
it's hard to see where exactly do you need to be uh, in uh, the next five years. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing for sure uh, in the financial services industry that you need to have done your homework and have done the, the core renewal. So I'm, I'm really proud that we've come so far on this journey because I, I think a uh, lot of our competitors are going to struggle in mm -hmm. the coming years if you haven't done that. So I think that's a prerequisite, um, like looking into the future. And then uh, just uh, creating these uh, uh, stepping stones uh, towards where you think you're going to be uh, and then also have the ability uh, to shift your prioritizations. Um, uh, so, so creating an organization and a technology landscape that uh, gives you the, the ability to, to move fast. Yeah. So you run a team of 75 people. What is your management style? How do you make sure that you build successful teams? Uh, and, 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 and how does also diversity play a role in that? It's always hard, <laughs> hard to talk about your own management style. But I think I, I try to uh, tell a story that people want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, uh, of course, not uh, going into details, but uh, if you use the future core as an example, uh, we talked earlier about that we needed to be uh, th this digital front runner. And as I said, we really weren't. And then we used uh, the small deliveries to prove that we were on the right track to say that, uh, uh, see, uh, uh, this partner is talking about us as the, uh, the digital player. And, and we used that and it kind of, uh, became a self-fulfilling prophecy and mm -hmm. and uh, we're now I think what we, we see it, uh, ourselves uh, with new eyes so we have much more self-confidence in the organization yep. and and um, uh, that that positive spiral um, gives a lot of energy mm -hmm. and that also of course, attracts new people and um, and also attracts that people want to stay and, and be part of, of, of building the story. Yeah, because that's not necessarily easy, I can imagine. I mean, people, they, they can choose if they go to work for, for Google or Accenture or SPP. It's, it's, it's complete. Spotify or... Yeah, yeah, or Spotify. You have all yeah, these Stock, exciting... Stockholm has a lot of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of uh, startups, uh, scale up and, 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 and a lot of technology companies there. So recruiting top talent is not necessarily easy for you, I can imagine. Uh, no, but it's definitely been easier uh, over the last years when okay. we've um, made a mark uh, out in, in the industry. So uh, for sure, it's been uh, easier now. But of course, there are some competencies that everyone wants. And um, I think in that perspective, uh, it's our work with sustainability is really important okay. because that's what makes uh, um, people proud of working in SPP and Storebrand. And definitely we see in the technology organization that that's uh, important. So let's talk a little bit more about this sustainability. What is it that, what, what is really the, 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 the philosophy of this in the company? And how do you also implement that on, on, on IT level? We uh, have worked in Storebrand for uh, over 25 years with sustainable investments. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we are also uh, corporate knights have uh, named us the most sustainable insurance company in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of goes into everything uh, that we do. Uh, we, we, of course, when we, in Corona times, you don't travel at all, but uh, we look at uh, how we travel, how we how we do things. Yep. Um, from an IT perspective, uh, we definitely look at it how we source uh, when we uh, or our, all our partners. We scrutinize how they work, uh, so we see that we have a good like, chain of uh, sustainability in. Uh, uh, the, the entire chain uh, and uh, now uh, like going to the cloud we see there are also benefits uh, from a um, sustainability perspective actually mm -hmm. so we're trying to look into like 
how how green can we make IT at the same time? So we're now about a year or a bit longer into uh, this this Corona crisis, and the way that we've worked has completely changed. Most of uh, of our people are working from home and so on. So that also means that the workplace and and the location uh, has become sometimes irrelevant. Has that also had an impact on how you recruit? Are you now recruiting internationally or are you still recruiting locally in people ar around Stockholm? We're still recruiting locally uh, around Stockholm, but I definitely think that um, that might change now. We see that this is not... Uh, I think where you're working is going to change. Mm -hmm. um, but then, it's, as I said, the Sture brand is um, a Nordic company, so we also, uh, I think, work more between Sweden and Norway now. Yeah, the new way of working has, has I mean, has changed so many things. Eh? Another thing I wanted to ask you, Christine, is I understand that in your IT team, uh, and, and yesterday was International Women's Day, that in your IT team, 45% of, uh, of, of the professionals there are women. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's quite something. I mean, that's quite exceptional. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Did, did you implement that or was that there uh, historically already? And, and what are the, what's the impact of having 45% uh, of the professionals in the IT team being, uh, being women? Uh, SPP itself is uh, also named the most uh, uh, equal <laughs> company in Sweden, actually. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not just uh, the technology side, but I think uh, from a technology perspective, um, uh, or in SPP in general, we we look at uh, like in recruitments, um, uh, we we pay attention to to. To like how we recruit, mm -hmm. how we recruit leaders, etc. So there are a lot of uh, good processes within within the company. How we work with this, and we try to also make sure that uh, uh, when you um, make people uh, visible in different perspectives, that we have both male and female. So so uh, um, that you have uh, you can have a role model in the in the organization. Yeah. And in your view, what is the impact of this? What is the impact if the IT team has 20% women or 45% women? How, how do, do teams function different if, if they are much more diverse in, in your experience? First of all, uh, in the technology sector, I think if you have uh, only, uh, only men in this example, then you lose 50% of the talent pool. So it's, so it's a... Uh, I think it's a problem on a on a social uh, level and a, a competence um, mm -hmm. uh, level, uh, but then also you get in a diverse team. You get more. You get uh, different views on uh, different aspects of of uh, problem solving, and I think it's really important that you have diverse teams. So let's talk about your, we talked about your management style. Let's talk about your leadership style. What kind of leader are you? I mean, you've been leading this team and, and the strategy of the digital strategy of the, of the company for seven years. Um, and there's different ways that, that you can lead. So what is specifically your leadership style and what do you think your colleagues will, how do they describe your leadership style when you're not around? When they can freely speak about your style of leadership, how you think they perceive you? Yeah, first of all, that you shouldn't ask me, <laughs> then you should ask someone working with me. And of course, that's always really hard, but I hope that they think that I'm involving uh, and uh, as I said, talk about uh, a story that, that they want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they say that I'm a positive person and, and uh, Kind of fun to be around. I, I want to be that uh, uh, as well, uh, or at least. And as I said, I don't uh, look at details when I talk to my leaders. Uh, so I hope that they get the range of freedom to to mm -hmm. um, uh, within their responsibilities, yeah. of course. 
Well, leadership comes from personality. And so in this uh, leadership deep dive series, we always um, ask people to share their MBTI, the personality profile with us. And uh, your uh, personality, uh, MBTI personality type is the ESTJ, also known as the executive. So you're more extroverted, more observant, more thinking and more uh, judging personality traits are, are, are for you. So. I'm going to uh, name a couple of strengths of this personality type and then you can tell me which one that you relate most with. And, 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 and so strengths for this personality type are that they, people are dedicated, that typically they are strong-willed, direct and honest, they are loyal, patient and reliable, they enjoy creating order and they're excellent organizers. Does that fit you completely? Or, 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 what, where, do you, where do you fit best in this description? As we talked about earlier, I uh, have done this several times and I either get ESTJ or mm -hmm. ENTJ. So, yeah. um, but I think uh, most of the things that you mentioned, I, I can uh, relate to. I am dedicated and, uh, and a loyal uh, <laughs> employee mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I um, ex I'm extrovert for sure and uh, get my energy from other people mm -hmm. uh, so I think going back to to uh, accenture times uh, so organization or like uh, being organized that's uh, our structure that's uh, I think part of my DNA as well so okay that fits well so Let's talk about the flip side of, of all the, the strengths, mm -hmm. and that is the, poten the development areas, the weaknesses, uh, let's call them. And so yeah. again, I'm going to um, uh, name a couple of them, and then you tell me which one that was most close to you, that you recognize, and that you had to overcome. So let's talk about weaknesses for uh, ESTJs are that they can be inflexible and stubborn. They can be uncomfortable with unconventional situations. They can be judgmental, sometimes too focused on social status, difficult to relax sometimes, or difficulty expressing emotions. Where is, where is or was your development uh, domain and how, how do you overcome uh, these potential weaknesses? Because as, as, as a good uh, a top digital leader, you need to be strong on different fronts, right? Yeah, I think, of course, there's several areas of improvement. I think uh, that I am sometimes impatient. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was one thing that I focused on over the last years. And I think that's uh, um, one of the things in a program like Future Core. It's really, I think it's really key to be patient and see the result. Uh, so that's... Um, one of the areas that I work with, new situations, he said, yeah, um, I, I kind of, I think I'm curious in, in new situations, mm -hmm. uh, but I can also be a bit hesitant, I think, to, to new situations. W what else do you have there on the uh, set? Probably. Well, difficult to relax. Is it easy for you to relax? Because I can imagine that you're hardworking, you have a family as well. So how do you relax? What's, uh, your, what's your way to, um, uh, to get back to yourself and to relax? I can uh, really relate to that it could be difficult to relax and mm -hmm. I of often have a lot of things um, uh, ongoing uh, but um, at home we have I have two daughters and we have a horse and a dog and a cat so the animals they uh, they keep me busy uh, and the family and the if animals they keep me busy and uh, they also give me a lot of energy so one thing that to relax i to go to the stable and just um, hang out and do really hard hard physical work in the stables i think that's a fantastic way of relaxing after um, uh, Teams meeting day at the home office. Uh, so, Christine, in your job, you're, you're quite driven. You're impatient. You want to uh, get the results. Um, so, so, what needs to happen that at the end of the day, you're happy and you're content uh, with your work? Or, or let's turn it around. What is it that really drives you in, uh, in, in your work? Of course, to see results and uh, in a way, I think I'm a, uh, basically a, a problem solver mm -hmm. more than a visionary person. And I think that you can achieve kind of the same results, uh, uh, but in, in a slightly different way. Uh, and I think 
Um, the future core again is uh, a proof of that. We were in a kind of um, bad uh, state, and uh, I focused on it doesn't, it shouldn't have to be this way. How can we solve this so mm -hmm. that we can be more forward leaning and uh, not so much um, <laughs> backward looking all the time? Uh, so, problem solver uh, is probably my. Uh, one of my my traits that okay. um, uh, moves me forward, and in, in that perspective, then I solving solving problems big and small that uh, that drives me. So, Christine, let's talk a little bit about uh, your values, the things that that drive you value wise. You have two daughters, uh, teenagers, fourteen and sixteen years old. What are the values that you uh, that you pass on to uh, to them? Well, I hope that I pass on that um, that anything is possible. And uh, going back to you said that yesterday was International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. uh, I really hope that uh, they don't see limitations in life uh, because of their gender mm -hmm. or because of uh, anything that they. Um, but that you need to work hard. Nothing comes for free, and that you need to. Uh, look for opportunity and, and grab opportunity when it comes and um, when, when you want something express that you, you, you can't uh, you can't guess what anyone uh, wants so um, I think that's one of um, really important for achieving anything that also set your mind on, on something and then also express it to people around you. Yeah. Who are the people that you look up to? Do you have examples, famous people, local uh, people close to you that were really important for, uh, to you that, that inspire you? I don't think I have that many like um, role models mm -hmm. that I point out. I, I think I got a lot of things from both my parents. Mm -hmm. I had a good childhood and uh, good values from, from my parents. And, and then I think I pick up things here and there from different people. Of, of course, there are like uh, leaders like uh, I said, uh, Julie Sweet, uh, the CEO of Accenture. I think yep. she's a, a great role model to mm -hmm. see that you can lead such a huge organization. Uh, but otherwise from that, I, um, I think I pick up from, from managers that I have and had and, and uh, little things here and there. Yeah. So in your professional or in your personal life, what was, what was in fact the best thing that has ever happened to you? Uh, the best things are of course my two daughters. Mm -hmm. There's for sure the best thing. Okay. And, and let's again look at the flip side of that. I mean, we all have our traumas and our mistakes and, and uh, bad things that happen to us. So what was, what was the worst thing that ha happened to you uh, in, in your life? Or, or what was your most brilliant mistake that you have gone through? The worst thing that have happened to me is that I lost my mother in pancreatic cancer about oh, yeah. four years ago. Uh, and we were extremely close. Uh, so uh, I don't know if I ever really bounced back from that, to be honest. And uh, it was uh, uh, such a uh, life defining moment when, when uh, I got the message and I was uh, in a taxi coming home from a business trip uh, from India. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, really tired after a long trip. And I called my mother uh, from the taxi. And she knew I was going to call because I always talk to her uh, in the taxi where I've been traveling a lot for work. And then she told me that um, that the uh, the tumor and it, it was just um, I can't even remember how I paid the taxi driver and and got into the house. And it was just such. Uh, a moment that before and after that taxi ride in my life, to be honest, because eight months later she was gone. And so that has impacted me uh, a lot. And how has that changed you? Well, what was the, how are you now a different person? What do you do differently? I think that in a way I was so spared from uh, things 
before that. So this it kind of shook me up that if this can happen, then anything can happen mm -hmm. and it can happen so quickly. Life can change so quickly. Uh, so in that perspective, like uh, 2017 was uh, the worst year uh, for me. And therefore uh, the pandemic year of 2020 was not so bad for me. I, I had the my family is healthy and safe, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going well uh, for work, and the organization is working really well from home office. Uh, so of course I, I miss traveling and I miss doing stuff, but um, in many perspectives it's, it was uh, quite an okay year. We're coming to the end of this interview, Christine, and. These uh, uh, videos, these leadership deep dives are being watched by many um, uh, professionals around the world and, and several of them want to build a career as a CIO as well. So what is the advice that you would give to your younger self, to when you were 15 years younger, when you were still um, in doing your first years at uh, Accenture? And, and uh, or people that are looking at this and, and, and really become, want to become a CIO as well. What is your advice to them? I don't think I ever wanted to be a CIO. And it's just, <laughs> uh, I think I've, uh, as I said, grabbed the opportunity as they've uh, come along. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's one, one advice, of course, to be open to opportunity. And then uh, back to, to Patience. I think one of the things uh, for younger professionals maybe today is that you get really impatient and you really want to, to move along fast. And mm -hmm. sometimes I think it can be good to stay that extra year or, or, or really learn mm -hmm. uh, the traits uh, of the, or the skills yeah. that, that you can benefit from later. So not... Uh, chasing, uh, of course, grabbing opportunity as it comes, but not chasing it and trying to, to move too fast. Yeah, so. A career is a marathon and yeah. not a sprint. So, um, uh, so many Definitely. things. Yeah, absolutely. And so, Christine, I would like to, uh, to thank you for your time uh, with this. Thank you for uh, sharing uh, your experiences, your vision, how you have completely changed and done the digital transformation of SVP, how you function as a professional, as a leader, um, uh, about your personality, your family, and so on. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you for sharing all that. Well, thank you. It's been really great talking to you.